Welcome back to Dylan with Age of Wonders 4, where we continue the journey of Bray Gear and the Anointed Orcs in episode 16. Uh, I should have been casting Mighty Meek. It was only 100 mana. I expected it to be more expensive. I really should have checked that. But we'll get that down pretty soon. It only costs us a little bit of gold and mana. It's not that big a deal. Alright, let's see here. So this battle will be 11 versus 7. Yeah. I'm going to fight this battle manually, but I'll cut it out for y'all. Alright, so I did lose a scout unit in that match because I didn't play very well. I kept meaning to remove the scout from the army, but when you talk and play at the same time, you kind of divide your brain power, so you often forget things, unfortunately. I'll just accept that loss. I misplayed, and I'll just I'll take it as it is. We got some production, mana, gold, we got a white wolf mount, and a wand of provocation. Let's take a look at those items. The Wand of Provocation gives us a 90% chance of inflicting Taunted on enemy units. It's not a bad choice at all. It has a range of 2 though, so I'm not sure we're going to make use of it on any of our mage units. We might keep it around for a melee unit if we eventually recruit a melee unit. And we also gained access to a White Wolf mount. Only Runa can take advantage of that. So the White Wolf gives very fast movement cavalry Pack Hunter, which gives plus 20% damage per adjacent friendly unit with Pack Hunter and some frost resistance. However, we already have a Nightmare Mount for Runa, so we're going to stick with the Nightmare Mount. White Wolf is a tier 3 mount with Enfeebling Howl, but that does cost a action. So I don't think Enfeebling Howl is the way to go, but that would be pretty decent for a melee unit because it's a because it only affects the units that are touching the hex that our unit is on. And Runa got a level up, so let's see what we want to give Runa. Once again, I kind of think that we're done with the support abilities on Runa. We're going to switch over to building her mage capabilities as well. So we're going to start with Magecraft for increased accuracy and the ability to ignore status resistance better. We're going to see if we can't take care of that gold vein before we take care of these other units over here. We also need to really consider building an outpost now that I think about it. Taking a look at the map, I think the best place to put down an outpost is probably going to be on the Underground Passage tile. Well, Underground Passage province, I mean, because we'll be able to expand east to the mana node. I believe there's also some haste berries right here. And then we can take the Archon Blood, the Gold Vein, and there's something else up here as well that's allowing us to build a conduit or a research post. We're going to get quite a bit of mana and or research from this city up north. Our western scout has just been prospecting over and over, getting tons of production and gold. She'll be fine as long as Gloom doesn't decide to kill her. And Gloom currently thinks that she's our friend at the moment, but we're going to surprise her not too long. Quirk's Light is going to get the ability to expand. We're going to leave most of the northern provinces to the northern city because there's a lot of ice to the east. We can eventually terraform the ice if we so choose, but that's going to be a little while. So what we're going to do first is we're going to expand another forester. And then we're probably going to build an abbey is what I was thinking about. Yeah, so an abbey gives us plus 10 knowledge straight up and then plus 3 knowledge per adjacent farm. What I can do is I can replace the mine with the abbey and that'll give us plus 9 knowledge just based on the, far the farms that are touching it. Unless I want to keep the mine, because some buildings do require a mine. Let me take a look. Yeah, to build the merchant's guild requires two mines, but I don't think we're going to build a merchant's guild here. We're probably going to build the farmer's guild for more food. That's a lot of food income, plus 10 income per farm. That's a lot of food. Yeah, I think our best choice here is going to be to build the abbey on top of the mine. So we got that built. We got a lot more knowledge going on now. Yeah, let's go ahead, let's start that Farmer's Guild in Orc's Light and get that rolling pretty quickly. Let's also make an Arbalist. And we now have enough Imperium to integrate Bastion. I'm quickly taking a look at my Empire Development screen first to see if there's any skills I'd like to pick up before that. But it does not look like there are any skills that I prefer to pick up. So, let's integrate the city. Bastion joins our Empire. The anointed orcs of Bastion have decided to accept me as Earthshaper and welcome a new age under our government. From this day onward, you direct Bastion's development. Its anointed orcs merely produce whatever you request and settle on the provinces you prefer. Alright, yeah. Fantastic. So, let's take a look. We should have gotten their hero as well, who is... what's your name? 
You are Ilian Ironheart. Related to Runa Ironheart. So right now he's got a Dwarven Hammer that makes him a shock unit primarily. He can get rid of defense mode, remove retaliation attacks, and he can push enemy units back by one hex. He's got a Visor of Farsight, which gives him extra defense and plus one vision range. And a chest plate of vitality gives him hit points and defense. We can't give him a mount because he has the two-handed hammer, unfortunately. He does have a rank of resistance, which is increasing his resistance by plus one. We could give him a lucky ring to get, increase his critical hit chance, but I do like the idea of making him hardier against magic. He has an amulet of vitality, which increases his hit points by plus ten. We're going to give him the wand of provocation. We're going to keep him as a melee hero. Let's take a look at what his skills are real quick. He has Blink, which lets him teleport to a target hex and gives him evasion for one turn. 40% evasion for one turn. Right now he's got Fighting 1, Fighting 2, Martial Expertise for extra melee and physical range damage, Restore, Sentinel, which gives him First Strike, that's not bad, and Sprint. I think I want to go ahead and reset him. I just want to see what his potential signature skills are. I will probably pick mostly the same skills. This is going to be our first melee hero. Oh, he had summons. Oh, you're, you're summoning elementals, man. There's no other way. Like, a tier 3 elemental? Hell yeah. Or a tier 3 animal? Nah, we're going to go with elemental. Let's get that elemental. So he's going to enter a battle, summon a unit, and then charge towards the enemy for the most part. We're going to give him fighting 1 for more melee damage. Then we're going to give him defense because he's going to get hit. And then fighting two. We're going to give him bolstering as well so that when he gets hit, his defense will go up or his resistance will go up in response to getting hit. Or we could just straight up give him evasion and more defense. Let's start with the regular defense, honestly. It's better to have it and then use it later. Ooh, always end your turn in defense mode. That's nice. But extra damage is also good. So let's get the damage, and then let's go ahead and let's also get the defensive master so that he's a tank. So he charges in, he beats the crap out of you with his hammer, and then you can't really respond to him. He's got 8 defense, which is 57 physical damage reduction, 4 resistance, which is 34% magic damage reduction. And these things will go up when he goes into defensive mode, which he will always do with defensive master. So he's a pretty he's a pretty good unit. I don't favor melee heroes, but I'll make use of him. We're gonna have him chill out in Bastion for a little while. Hmm, we did. Uh, I might want to stop working on something in another city. No, Bastion's just gonna have to wait for production, and we're gonna turn off the automation. Whenever you integrate a city, you need to turn off the automation if you want to turn it off. Personally, I do recommend turning it off. We're going to give Bastion Ilian Ironheart as a governor. He's going to give plenty of production. They're definitely going to need it because they've got quite a few buildings I'd like them to construct. And it just makes sense that he's going to govern the city that he came from. Mishara is being kind of aggressive. She is trying to catch up with us on Heartfang, which is irritating me. If she doesn't watch out, we might, uh, we might have to take care of her. But we'll be nice. We got a new Rally of Legions that we can call. So we have quite a few units that we could summon. And we have 11 recruitment points that we could make use of. It looks like we didn't call any rallies before. We don't have any gold to spend on it. We'll definitely consider that next turn if we can get maybe a Brewer Ogre or perhaps a Butcher Ogre. Hmm, there's something hiding on this iron deposit here. What is that? Stone, spirit, and gargoyles. We're gonna take care of that real quick. Probably random battle it. Probably auto resolve. Yeah, let's see how the AI does. Yeah, got took him out. We got some cloud in a bottle and production. Cloud in a bottle lets you move enemy units back. Well, all units back actually in a three hex cone. Let's give that to our tank boy. Alright, Mr. Tank, you get the cloud in a bottle. That doesn't actually cost any action points either. It's very nice. It's, I've been annoyed quite often by enemy units using that ability. And then we're going to clear the Archon Blood in the next battle, most likely. And then s probably take out the uh, Ogre right here. And then swing west, take out the Gold Van. This Monster Van is going to be easy peasy. Let's just auto resolve that. 
took him out. Got a book of siege crafts. Really? This grants siege breaker to all units in the army. That's a that's an item, right? Yeah. Let's give that to Breaker right now. So that'll really increase our siege ability. I don't think we're going to explore this uh, northwestern section right here, although I might uh, break off the Inferno Hound to check it out. It's not a bad idea. We'll send the Inferno Hound to check it out, and then we'll pull back. I don't think there's much to see, though. We're going to start working on a tavern first in Bastion, because the city stability is not very good at the moment. And then we're possibly going to build maybe an abbey after that. Maybe right in that research post, yeah. So it has the farms, because we're going to build another farm right there. That's going to be a lot of extra knowledge. We can also cast Mighty Meek finally. Let's do that. So this is going to give all of our units faithful, which reduces their upkeep. It's going to cost us 16 gold and 32 mana. But I have a feeling that if we look in the top here, our incomes are actually going to increase. It also gives us plus one spirit damage on attacks for each enemy unit tier of the target. It looks like we're about the same. We got Covenant of the Faithful, so we might want to consider casting that on somebody here pretty soon. Probably going to cast it onto Gold Wall. Yeah, let's start working on casting it so we can get that set up on Gold Wall. We have a ton of mana income at the moment. We can finally get Impressment. This is something I've been looking for. Unit tier of all unit tier 1 units get minus 30% unit upkeep. We're going to grab that right now, and then our gold income go went up like almost 50 gold per turn and our mana went up by like 20 mana per turn. Chaos is just such a nice affinity. Even though it's not really a nice affinity. We need to take out uh, Heartfield here pretty soon. We need to take out Heartfield before we deal with Gloom honestly. As well as that Haunted Graveyard to keep sending attackers into our territory. The useless Stone Root isn't even going to defend themselves from the Marauders unfortunately. We're going to have to pull back the Northern Army. At least one of the Northern Armies. So let's send Runa back home. We're going to have to hold off on bringing down this army. Yeah. You know what? I bet that I can probably get Bregear's army to take care of that force and then march east. We're going to keep our armies up here. I have made a slight mistake by going ahead and moving Runa, but that's okay. Yeah, as I suspected, there's nothing else to see down here in the underground other than destroying this earth and terrain. Well, excavating the earth and terrain. It's going to take a while for us to get back. Ugh, I really don't like the underground. Chaplain, please come north. We've met somebody new. We've met cult leader Werlach of Insolidur. He says, prove your strength to me and we may yet conquer this realm together. I think well, yeah, our relations aren't very good at the moment so I'm not going to send him a welcome gift I don't see any point in doing that so he's somewhere in the southeast yeah he's down here our water scout has been checking the place out and he's cleared the mirror fields but he hasn't actually taken it we're going to send uh, what's his name alien we're going to send alien east to help deal with the invading army that's coming we might be able to take out the invading army using just him, a chaplain, and maybe one other unit. Like perhaps another arbalist? Yeah, let's get another arbalist. Mulgrave really needs some more food, so we're gonna build a fishmonger in Mulgrave. We could build a state hall in not too long, but we do need two farms to do that. And we're gonna get those two farms right here eventually, but that's gonna take a while. We're also going to have Mulgrave build another Anvil Guard. Bastion finished its tavern, so its city stability is looking a lot nicer now. And I think what we're going to do here is we're going to build a market. Oh no, I said I was going to build an Abbey, right? Yeah, let's get the Abbey built right on that research post right there. So we'll get the Abbey, we'll probably move into a market right after that here. For our next research, we could do Steel Fury Chant to switch our bolstered defense and resistance into Strength and Fortune. We could do Blessed Reinforcements, but that is literally useful because the Vassal doesn't do anything. Or we could do Enchanted Crow Companion. Let's just grab the Enchanted Crow Companion and then upgrade our scouts a little bit. We got that instantaneously, actually. So let's cast that... Let's cast Covenant of the Faith first on Gold Wall. Alright, Covenant of the Faith on Gold Wall. 
uh, Cold Wall. Select. Yeah, so that's six mana per turn to get five extra Imperium per turn. I think that's a pretty good, I think that's a very good exchange. And now we can select a new tomb. So let's take a look and see what we would like. I'm thinking that we really need something that's much more damage based. We need to start hurting units. Zephyr archers might be pretty good. They've got an AoE attack, the Zephyr shot. It's very nice. Yeah, I like the idea of the Tomb of Winds. So we get Zephyr Archer, they have an area of effectability, the Zephyr Shot. So the central unit gets 34 physical damage on average. Adjacent units get half of that. They can have a regular bow, so I prefer regular bows to crossbows, although I do get the idea of crossbows not needing to stand in one place to do the most damage. We can get a Wind Rager, which has a melee strike and a whirlwind attack, which 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 damages all adjacent enemies. Dust Storm will be able to get a spell that can blind enemies in a 1 hex radius. We'll be able to make a abducting cyclone so we can target an empty hex and pull the closest enemy to within 3 hexes of that location. Our scouts can become flying and we can cast this favorable wind spell eventually to make our armies move faster across the water by regaining their movement points. So let's grab Tomb of Winds and let's see what they gotta say. Above the petty machinations of mortals lies the domain of the sky. Here, the winds blow wild and free, unfettered by the land below, uncaring, powerful. Those who manage to bend these winds to their will harness a truly powerful and liberating force. Foes are swept away, plucked from safety, and allies are buoyed, bolstered beyond their land-bound capabilities. Alright, let's grab the Zephyr Archer, and then Orc's Light can annex another province. Let's grab the Forester down here. We need that for the Armory, actually, which we're going to build eventually. We got a message. Let's see what it is. It is Mashara. She's happy that we're allies. Fantastic. Uh, she's ready to negotiate another treaty or diplomatic state. Let's actually think about that. Let's get a defensive pact with Mashara. That leads to an alliance. I would like more allies, and... That'll lower the grievances that we get against her when we take Heartfang. When we take Heartfang, looks like she may have given up on Heartfang. That's good. We can't afford boosting the allegiance with them quite yet, but I think that we're pretty much guaranteed to get Heartfang on our side. And then Heartfang will be a buffer state against Gloom in the coming war. So I've thought about it, and I think I'm gonna reset Breger's signature skill, and then mostly pick the same hero skills. I really do like having the nature affinity from Virulent Outbreak. But we do tend to play in such a way the enemy comes close to our shield units. So they kind of get diseased sometimes. And being diseased means that they have a higher chance of getting hurt by magical units. And our frontline units already have problems getting hit by magic. So I'm going to reset his skills and let's pick something else. Let's go ahead and let's take the Frostfire Detonation. It's a reasonable skill. And it can be used multiple times during a match. We'll go ahead and pick up Magecraft. Experienced leader, restore, or maybe not restore. No, restore is a good thing because it can remove negative status effects. We're gonna give him defensive training, strength training, endurance training, and then I'm not sure how important experienced leader is. Honestly, two plus two experience per turn. Uh, you play the game for a maximum of 120 turns usually at most if you have the score victory enabled. So I think I'm gonna shy away from experienced leader and instead come into some more mage abilities such as uh, Magecraft 1. And then we'll go from there. We are of course gonna bring our underground units closer to the above ground and get the hell out of the underground. Being down here is not a fun experience. Runa's gonna return to the north so that we can focus more on taking care of these units, but we won't be able to take them out this turn simply because we don't have Runa within reinforcement range of the Archon Blood. And I actually should step her to the side by just one more and then found that outpost. So there we go. Bring her back. Chaplain, you're gonna join up with Bastion, or what's her name? Ilian, that's right. I keep forgetting her name's Ilian. It's kind of like, uh, it's like Iliad or Ilian. What's the World of Warcraft guy? I can't remember his name. 
we are absolutely pumping out the gold and mana at this point so I'm kind of thinking that we should maybe get some crypts going as well let's see how many people we have in our crypt only one uh, never mind a crypt is not that big a deal I'm really glad that you enjoyed the video so much that you reached the end since you made it here why not give the video a like since it really helps the channel and the video reach a wider audience that enjoys this kind of content and I'd like to hear any opinions you have about my moves or the video itself in the comments below if you'd like to see more you can always subscribe and Breger and I will see you in episode 17